Hello, viewers of Wasteland TV. Is the red light on here? Oh, the red light's on. Okay, so we are like filming this red this light's time. on like a Cylon. Because the last time we met, the camera didn't click on all the way. I know, I know. So now we're prepared. Yes, we are prepared. So how does it feel to be back at the cons? It feels great. It actually does. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is C. Andrew Nelson. I'm an actor, visual effects artist, animator, voiceover performer, and a genuine Dark Lord of the Sith. <laughs> but, uh, and yeah, has, and has a back. site called Aqua Tank. Ah, uh, thank you so much for mispronouncing once again my YouTube Aqua -tazy? channel. Aqua <laughs> Aquatase. Aqua Tazy. Uh, I'm going to Aqua Tase you. <laughs> no, it's great to be back Where's at the cons. Tazy? It's fantastic to be at the, at the cons. It really is. Uh, so happy to, because it's, uh, you know, I, I miss it. When, uh, it it's, it's funny, because it's like, you know, I'm as big a fan as anybody else. So yeah, you got a pin. I got a pin. Look at that. I've got a pin. I'm, You're a, fan, now I'm a fan of this guy now. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what narcissism. Oh, thank you. Thank you, yes. An official Wasteland C. Andrew Nelson pin. Oh, yes. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's great to be back out to the, at the conventions and to, and to see everybody because you see all the wonderful familiar faces, but then you get to meet all the new fans and everything like that. And it, it's just it's just great. And then I you know I'm out raising money for Starlight Children's Foundation. So is that something new? No, no, no. I've been raising money for Starlight since my very first convention appearance back in 2005. So uh, in fact, for years I turned down doing convention appearances, and I said I'll do it if I can do it for charity. And I was in New York. We were doing the David Letterman show. So I was playing Vader on the. David Letterman show. Uh, this was 2005, and uh, Letterman used to do this routine. He would do the uh, the top ten list. So uh, it would be something to say that, that they would pass off as some kind of top ten list. And this one was top ten lines you will never hear in a Star Wars movie. And so I got to go to the bathroom. No, no. They had uh, they had they had ten Star Wars characters come out on stage and deliver some silly line, line that you would never hear in Star Wars. And so Vader was the number one answer which was, I once used the force to open a jar of elastic pickles. So, that's the Letterman kind of humor. I wonder if that's where, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, where yes, Seth McFarlane oh, in yeah. uh, the uh, Orville, which I finally saw, yes. which I really enjoyed. It's a great show. Where he always says, tells the strong girl, open this bottle of pickles. You know, that could be. Because never know. everything McFarlane does is a homage to something else. It is. It's like that, it, that show is so full of Easter eggs and everything he does is. But yeah, so we were in New York, we were doing the Letterman show, we had done a rehearsal and myself and Matthew Wood, uh, voice of General Grievous, we are walking back to the hotel and it's three weeks before Revenge of the Sith came out in theaters and we passed by a theater and people were already camped out in line and, uh, and a lot of them in costume. And we thought, oh my gosh. And we, we walked up to them, we didn't tell them who we were, but we walked up to them and said, what are you guys doing? And they were doing a stand in line a thon to benefit Starlight Children's Foundation, which at that time was called Starlight Starbright Children's Foundation. They've shortened the name. And as they started telling me about the charity, I thought, that's my charity. And I have been raising money ever since then for my very first convention appearance in Chicago in 2005. So I, I donate a lot of money to them, and they're a wonderful organization. You can find out about them by going to starlight.org. Not Aquatacy. No, not Aquatacy. <laughs> yeah. I have a YouTube channel called Aquatacy. It's all about tropical fish. But your dear host likes to tease me about the name. Do you have Aquaman in it? No, he drowned. <laughs> How can he drown when he's a fish? You know, some sometimes... He, uh, you know, he would go out at night on the weekends and, you know, and, you know, so, celebrate a little too much. You know, it was an so accident. You haven't seen the book of Boba Fett yet. I have not seen the book of Neither Boba Fett. Neither have I. I have not seen the book of Boba Fett. I haven't seen the comic book of Boba Fett. I haven't seen, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, the uh, greeting card of Boba Fett. I haven't seen any of it yet. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. How about the uh, Mandalorian one? And Mandalorian. Two? I've seen that. I've seen the, all of the Mandalorian. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. Even to the last you know, moment of, of the final episode of season two, which was great. And I lo loved the fact that they brought in the Dark Troopers, from which we cr first brought into the Dark Forces game. Wait a minute, there we go. Wait, a minute, wait, 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 pause, wait a minute. No, don't pause. Uh, grabbing a picture, and there it is. Dark Forces, <laughs> game I worked on. Yeah, was it worth, I, the, I wait? Was it it. worth the wait as I was reaching across that? Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, we had a, we had these characters called the Dark Troopers, and they brought them into the Mandalorian. So that's cool. That was it that, that version, or was it the uh, human version? It was uh, no, it was it was 
It was it was a mechanical version, of them, but yeah, but there. Because I know there was the uh, human versions too. Yeah. Because they had action figures. That was later on. Yeah. But, yeah. but for the Dark Forces game, but they went back to that. It's like cool. Yeah. So you go, yes, I get, I get a, I get a check. <laughs> no, I don't get a check for that. No. But uh, it was just nice to see something like that. That 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 they loved those uh, that that, you know, that they that stuff from, from back then. You know. Did you see the uh, Justice League Snyder cut? Yes, I did. What'd you think of it? I thought it was one of the longest, most miserable, boring films I'd ever seen in my oh, life. Oh wow! I have the opposite. I I, I, can't, I I can't imagine how it was worse before, because it was just I really honestly, and I, I'm a huge DC comic fan. So am I. For years and years. And right I thought, now, I thought I didn't care about any of these characters. I really didn't care about any of the characters. I thought the the one character. I mean, I thought I, I like Jason Momoa. I think he's 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 okay as Aquaman. But again, it was like little moments but you know, in, in in hours and hours of tedium. But the funny part is, when I when I saw the animated version of uh, that story it's based on. Yeah. I was surprised how they consolidated certain characters, like the Flash and Shazam sure. on one character. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm sorry, I thought I thought it absolutely paled in comparison to all the Arrowverse stuff that was on, you know, on television. And, but I even, just thought it was lame. It was, it was, it was really. I sat there thinking, when is this thing over? Because it just, it just went on and on, and it was, it was just monotonous, tedious, and gratuitous. There was stuff that didn't need to be in there. I can't imagine that it was shorter before. But uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it. I thought it I'm was fun. I'm glad you do. And, I, and again, this is just my opinion. It's just my opinion, folks. But, but uh, my opinion is that current Star Trek is really bad. Yes. I've tried to watch Discovery. I have seen Discovery. And I can't and watch it. Maybe if it had not been Star Trek, if it had been something completely different that didn't have the Star Trek, it's, it's, it's basically Star Trek and I don't think it. I don't think it'd even be uh, very good as a uh, videotape sci-fi. Maybe. Maybe. You know, it's like... There are some movies you can look at, like episodes one, two, and three. If they weren't Star Wars, they would have been better films. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I just, I no, I, I, I can't, can't get behind it at all. No, I can't either. Yeah. The characters are dislikable. The yes. The directions they go with it, and yeah. you're going, where are all the white men? Uh, me, I'm just waiting for, I'm just waiting for, uh, you know, season three of the Orville. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I watched Orville season one, and I realized, why is it that the one show that's a parody of Star Trek? Has the formula right? Yes, because it was done with love. Yeah, it was done and, with and love and respect, and not trying to reinvent the and wheel. And in the first four episodes, mm -hmm. it's more Family Guy esque. And then he realized yes. people aren't watching this for Family Guy; right. they're watching it for yeah uh, uh, to relive next gen. Sure. I mean, it, was, it started off with fart jokes and things like that, and then but then it turned into this amazing, still funny, but still amazing show. Yeah. And so by the end of season two, I was like, Yeah, I got I got to see season three. Yeah, um, and it's like, they've had so many delays on season three, yeah. you're going, when is it going to be released? Yeah, but hopefully soon. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, like I said, like I said, I was surprised in season one to find like a cancel culture episode. Yeah. The, the trans uh, topic, mm -hmm. the, uh, there's one other. Um, for, you know, uh, I, you know it, I, just, I know that the original Star Trek was always topical, tried to be topical. But, you know, I, my feeling is, just tell me a good story first with good characters. Yeah. And, I, and, and for me, that's where Discovery fails. It just, they're just, the stories aren't engaging to me and everything. Now, I, I did see, I will say this, I saw the, the pilot episode of Picard, and I enjoyed that. I haven't seen anything since uh, then. I enjoyed I Picard. I don't know how it is, but, uh, but I enjoyed But the I know episode. it didn't fare well with a lot of fans as, as, they, as they digested it. Mm -hmm. When they first saw it, and go, Oh, Patrick Stewart, sure. it's so great. Yeah. And then it's like they just didn't fare well with it either because yeah. it's lumped be with uh, Discovery and yeah. Lower Decks. Yeah, I won't watch Lower Decks. I, I no, watched I the no first interest. season of Lower Decks. zero interest in it. Yeah. It's garbage. Yeah. It rides nostalgia so yeah. hard. Yeah. And now they've got the, the, new, uh, the new animated one that's on the Paramount I Plus. saw the, on YouTube the, the pilot oh, on okay. it. Yeah. It wasn't bad. I was surprised. Yeah, Janeway and everything. Yeah. yeah. That one actually looks pretty decent. For, you know, if I, I'm thinking, okay, if they're going to do one that's basically a kid's show, this is actually not too bad. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I love the character of Janeway anyway. So that's, that's it. I was surprised to see that they chose Janeway as a holo character for it. Yeah, it, it there's some, I don't know. There's something nice about that. Yeah. And she's a I don't, I've always liked Kate What's Mulder, funny right? is she's softer in that than she is in her original show. Yes. Yeah. 
she could be a hard nose in the original oh, yeah. show, and I like that about it. But, but the problem with Voyager is their their episodes are hit and miss. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's too bad because I like the whole cast on on, on Voyager, and I, there's a the lot problem, I like about it. But and political reasons, the cast kept changing who they want to focus on. Yeah. True. The uh, the show that I actually ended up really liking, even though I didn't see it when it first came on, was Enterprise. I haven't seen Enterprise. I couldn't get past it, the first it, four episodes. If you get, it, once you do, once you get past the first few episodes, it gets really good. Does it? And it's actually so, so one a few that people have that, told me that too. And I think it's one that, that that really does harken back to the original series, and it really feels it, it feels right. Uh, after you, it, it takes a while to get into it, but once you do, it does. And th- there's some shows that are like that. Like uh, at first, when I watched Arrow, I didn't like Arrow. And, and, and but I got seven episodes in, and it's like, oh, okay, I like this show. But you know? Arrow has the same problem Smallville does. After so many seasons, it just craps out. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't see the last season of Arrow yet. So. I, I'm not missing much. It's yeah. garbage. There's a lot of stuff that I've missed. I, but uh, and it's like it's incoherent. Uh, it's rushed. That's too bad. Yeah. I still got to break down and watch the last episode of Supernatural. My wife watches Supernatural. That I've was never a watched that it. was a great show. Yeah. Uh-huh. Two says. sexy men killing monsters. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not enjoy a movie like that? And the funny part is they make fun of the fact in the show that they're that way too. Well, sure. I think the fa- I think that's one of the things that keeps that show, you know, kept it going was that they were, they didn't take themselves too seriously. No. And I, I, I think projects that do that are, are very good. So. And at the time when they needed to be serious, they were serious. Yeah. And that was a nice thing about it. You have to find that balance. I mean, I, what, there was a project. This project I'm working on right now called Heroes of Extinction, which is a, a seven-part superhero audio drama. So there's no visuals; it's all audio, theater of the mind. Oh, me! Uh, we got to use our imagination. Absolutely. I'm so sorry. I'm going to play Fortnite then. Robbie. Oh, oh right. I'm going to have to play Fortnite then because because yeah. I've got addicted to playing video games yes. during this. Uh, but with Heroes of Extinction, which is a, a story about uh, it's a superhero story, very different than than, than what you would, are used to. Um, you mean Infinity had, Crisis? No, yeah. Infinite but, Crisis? No, Infinite Crisis stuff. But, but crisis yeah, I, on Infinite Earth? Right, exactly. But no, Secret the, Wars? Nothing like that. Uh, but the, 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 the fun thing about it was we had to find a balance between the, the serious and, and the humorous in it. Because if you don't, if it's all serious, nobody wants to watch that. If it's all humorous, nobody takes it seriously. So you've got to find that balance. And, and, and yes, was, like a radio sh- radio drama. And that's exactly what it is. It's like it's like the new twist of the old radio drama. So if anybody wants to find out about it, then go to heroesofextinction.com. Not Aquatazy? Not Aquatazy. It's Aqua... Aquatazy. It's Aquatazy. you got me mispronouncing my own channel. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I was at the, at the uh, electronic show... Mm-hmm. I mean, Sack Gamers Expo? Yeah. I actually had found some old autographs I was going to uh, wanted to show you. But I didn't oh, want yes. to bring them out here today because uh, you have to walk so far. Yes. <laughs> and it's like I found uh, Peter Mayhew's. Uh, oh, yes. Wow. Uh, Jeremy Bullock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, David Prowse. Yeah, it's so interesting. Anthony though. Daniels. Yeah. It's weird for me because years and, ago as a fan. No, no, what's funny is yeah. and an autograph photo of Darth Vader. Oh, yes, when... A guy would do a pair yes. of... I think I know who that was, too. Um, I was, but... was going to bring it as a thing. Yes. Have you ever had this autograph before? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the weird thing for me is, like, you know, as, a, as a teen, I would go to the conventions, you know, and a teen and, and, young, and early in my 20s, I would go to conventions, and that's where I first met Peter Mayhew. And I had him sign my autograph book, and uh, Jeremy Bullock signed my autograph book back in the day. And, uh, and then years later... I'm, I'm, I'm friends with them. I was, you know, very dear friends with Peter Mayhew. And, and these are, these are the, yeah. young, like, pictures back when they were young. Like, Peter Mayhew has yeah. a long, oh, yeah. long, shaggy yeah. Uh, yeah. hair, like Weird Al yeah. in sure. the picture. Um, yeah. Jerry yeah. Bullock is a, is a young and girl. Oh, yeah. Now. Yeah. Just wonderful people. Not sure. a zombie and I, anymore. And I, I miss them. I miss them terribly. There, yeah. I think the only one left is, did you ever meet uh, David Prowse? I met David Prowse once back in 1978. He came to the San Francisco Bay Area. He was doing a signing at the Federation Trading Post in Berkeley, which was a collectible store, mostly Star Trek stuff, but they had him out there. And I remember, uh, you know, I was like, what, I'm, I'm like 15 years old. But at that time, going back to you, yeah. Star Trek and Star Wars in the store together wasn't sacrilegious. No, it wasn't. Now it's like it's a turf war. Yeah. But, uh, but, but back then it was simple. And, and, and he was there all day, and I remember the line was just this blocks long and I stood in line all day I was like the last kid in line to see him and uh, he was wonderful and he signed autographs for me and everything and I never 
saw him again since. You know, he was and banned. Of course he's passed. He was banned from uh, shows in America by George Lucas. Mm, I don't know if that's exactly true or not. That's not entirely true, no. Uh, Where? That, there's a lot of, of misconception. That's and, all, that and what I've heard. And, and then different sides have played it up, but no. That isn't exactly the case, but... Uh, I mean, I know the truth of things, but I can't say all of the truth. Oh, yeah, things, I know. But, yes, but, uh, but yeah, he was, he was a nice guy to me back then, and uh, he never crossed paths. He didn't want to do signings with anybody else connected with Vader. Uh, not, not Hayden Christensen, not myself, not uh, uh, Bob Anderson or anybody. Uh, you know. so, so when he had his table set up, did he ever have his monster picks, too? Um, I don't know. Back then, he was only just signing Star Wars stuff and... That was the only time I ever saw him. So. Yeah, because I was surprised to find out he was a Hammer monster, Hammer oh, Frankenstein. I didn't, because that's where I knew him from. Because I was a, a Hammer Studios fan from way back. You know, uh, long before Star Wars ever came out, I was a big uh, Hammer Studios fan. I know. Uh, I used to have my Me walls plastered with. Hammer I know Mega is now making the Hammer uh, monsters. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've, I've found Peter Cushing, but I haven't found Christopher Lee yet. Yes. Somewhere there are photos floating of me out there on the internet from back in high school when I was dressed as Christopher Lee's Dracula. Cool. Yeah. No, it wasn't cool because I was a sad, baby-faced kid. I was 18 looking like I was 14. So, <laughs> but they're out there somewhere. <laughs> but everyone has those pictures they don't want to see. I'm surprised that my photo from my high school yearbook, the year I graduated, that uh, there's a photo of the drama club and I'm dressed as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And that's never made it to the internet. I'm mean, going to have to leak it myself, I guess, to the internet. Yeah, you do. Yeah. But, uh, On Aquatazy. <laughs> ah, it's no. been a while. <laughs> it's been too long. Yes. yes. i got to make up. <laughs> no, you don't. Two years worth. No, two years worth of razzing me about that. It's a quadrosite, folks. You can, you, can, you can surf away from this channel and go to my channel. It's great. <laughs> well, sell us out. I gave you a pin. Oh, all right. You can, you can come to my channel, and then I'll tell you to come back and watch this channel. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but, yeah. We'll stop it here because you're starting to have people uh, circulating. Yep, yep, yep. So. so, thank you so much. Yes. The force is strong with you. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. But we'll find out next time. Right. Thank you. You're welcome.